as we start walking through how to prepare the statement of cash flows and specifically with the operating section I really hope you've got your notes printed for one thing I'm going to give you a lot of data in there and I want you to be able to go back and find the data yourself so I'll refer back to these financial statements that I've posted in those notes but also I give you a format for formatting the, the statement of cash flows so hopefully you've got your notes printed there with you the very, very last page is where I've kind of put an outline or a format of the statement of cash flows. So as we walk through it together, you'll fill in that outline. And by the end, your statement of cash flows should look very similar to the one that I'm going to show you at the end of the next video. But throughout there, so you want to kind of have your notes spread out in front of you so you can see the data and then you can write in on the form there at the end. So this is the data that I'm giving you. Remember, the, the statement of cash flows is the last financial statement that we do. So by the time we do this, we've already prepared the balance sheet and the income statement. And we're going to need both of those to complete the statement of cash flows. Also remember, when we look at an annual report, we're given what's called comparative financial statements, which means they give us typically more than one year. So they give us last year's balance sheet and this year's balance sheet. So this year's balance sheet is the 2024, and then the 2023 is last year so that we can compute how much each of the accounts went up or down. Now, I want to point out right now, we can see that last year cash was 42000 This year it's 22000 So we know that cash has declined by 20000 By the time we finish the statement of cash flows, we are going to get the answer that cash declined by 20000 So this is one of those that you know what the right answer is before you even start. Okay, If we don't get that it declined by 20000 we'll know we made a mistake somewhere. So I've posted these in your notes so that you have them with you. You can write on them, you can draw on them, you can make notes on them so that you know where to find this data. Now we also have the income statement. So again, we've got our revenue, our cost of goods sold, our gross profit. We've got our operating and selling expenses. Uh, we have our other expenses. Those are important. And then ultimately we have our net income of $40,000. So to use the indirect method of, we're going to start with net income. So you start with net income. And then the first thing that we do is add back any non-cash expenses. Our non-cash expenses would be expenses that we recorded, but we didn't actually write a check to anybody for. We never paid cash for them. The biggest and most common non-cash expense we have is depreciation. So we debit depreciation expense for a large amount every year, but we don't actually write a check to anybody for it. So we're going to take net income and add back to that the depreciation expense. So we'll start with net income and then we'll add depreciation expense. The next thing we're going to look at is the gains and losses in that other revenue and gains, other expenses and losses section. So specifically, remember the gains and losses have to do with selling long-term assets, plant assets. And we know that plant assets need to be taken care of in the investing section. So since the gain and loss shows up in the income statement, I have to deal with it here, but I want to essentially undo its effects because I'm going to deal with it in the investing section. So remember, we add gains originally and we subtract losses on the income statement. So to undo those effects so that I can deal with them on the in, in the investing section, I'm then going to subtract gains, any gains that I see, and I'm going to add back all losses. Essentially, I'm negating their effects on the income statement. Now, if you're working a problem on your homework or whatever, and there are no gains or losses, or they tell you that no plant assets were sold during the period, then guess what? You can just skip this step. You don't have to deal with it. So once we've got net income, we've added back depreciation, we've dealt with any gains or losses, then what we're going to do is turn our attention to the balance sheet, specifically to the current asset and current liability section. So it turns out that every current asset 
with the exception of cash, has a partner account on the income statement. And every current liability has a partner account on the income statement. In fact, every income statement account is partnered with the current asset or current liability. So we can determine, based on the changes in the current assets or current liabilities, what happened to our income statement accounts. So I'm going to skip over this chart for just a minute. You can come back and fill it in later, but I want to get to my chart. So This is a chart that I created. This is my own personal shortcut that I created when I took this class 100 years ago because I'm very old. So what this is, is I just, I'm going to give you a minute to draw the chart in your notes, and then I want you to just think through it with me. So let's think through our current assets. We're going to, the first current asset that we always see listed is cash. You're going to skip cash. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to get to that change in cash at the end. So I'm going to skip cash. The second current asset that I see listed typically is accounts receivable. So let's think about this for a minute. If accounts receivable went down from last year to this year, what makes accounts receivable go down? Remember, accounts receivable is money that our customers owe us. So if accounts receivable went down, it's because our customers paid us that money. So when account receivable goes down, I want to add the amount of the decrease. So I'm going to look last year to this year and I'm going to say, all right, current accounts receivable went down. I'm going to add the amount of the decrease. Okay. Now let's look at the next current asset we, we typically see, which is inventory. So if inventory went up last year to this year, that means I bought more inventory. If I bought inventory, I had to spend cash. So if inventory went up, I want to subtract the amount of the increase. So I'm going to go through every current asset, skipping cash, but every other current asset, and I'm going to compare it calculate the amount of the increase or decrease. If the current asset went down, I want to add the amount of the decrease. If the current asset went up, I want to subtract the amount of the increase. So once I've done all of the current assets, I'm then going to flip over the current liability section. So let's think about current liabilities. Let's think about accounts payable. If accounts payable went down from last year to this year, remember accounts payable is money that I owe to my suppliers. So if my accounts payable went down, that's because I paid that debt. So that represents money that I spent. So I want to subtract the amount of the decrease. Now let's think about another current liability we common have, commonly have, unearned revenue. Remember, unearned revenue is when a customer has paid me before I have done the work. So if unearned revenue went up last year to this year, that means customers have paid me more money. That means I've received cash. So I want to add the amount of the increase of the current liabilities. Okay. So using your data, looking at your income statement and your balance sheet, and then filling in that chart on the last page of your notes, let's walk through this example for Smart Touch Learning. So again, when we're using the indirect method, we're going to start with net income and then adjust it accordingly. We're going to add back depreciation. So we start off with net income of $40,000. I pulled that straight off of the income statement. So the first line you want to write net income and $40,000. Next, I'm going to look on my income statement and find depreciation expense. Whatever that amount is, I want to add. So the next thing I'm going to see that depreciation expense was $20,000. So I'm going to add $20,000 to that, treat it as a positive number because it's an add. So now I want to look and see if there are any gains or losses in the other revenues and gains section of my income statement. So I see that I had a gain of $10,000. Since that was originally added on the income statement, I want to subtract it 
now. So I'm going to put that in parentheses to subtract the gain. I didn't have any losses, so I skipped that. If I did have a loss, I would add it. So when I get to the investing section, I'll deal with this $10,000 gain there. So now I'm going to skip over to my balance sheet. I'm going to start with the current assets, skip cash, and go to your next current asset. So the next current assets that I see, I see that accounts receivable went up, it increased, so I'm going to subtract that 17000 I see that inventory went down, so I want to add that 4000 Then I look at my current liabilities. I see that accounts payable went up, so I'm going to add that 40000 I see that accrued liabilities decreased, so I want to subtract that 5000 so when I add all those numbers up, I see that my net cash from operating activities is $70,000. Now remember, my profit was only $40,000. But really what I'm saying is, while I may have shown profit of $40,000, I actually made $70,000 in real hard money just for, from doing my normal day-to-day -day operations last year. So if I used cash basis accounting, I can assume that my profit would have been 70000 not 40000 Okay.